afternoon, I'm Mary Kate. This is Maria and Isabel. Welcome to Holly Lodge Girls College, BBC School News Report. It's Thursday, 10th of March. First, the headlines. Plans to increase Sunday trading laws have been overturned in Parliament. The race for the US presidential candidate continues. Premier football clubs plan to cap away tickets to £30. Our first story came as a result of discussions about some of the issues that young people today are talking about. One of these topics was how our media represented terrorism. We wondered how much young people are actually affected by what we hear or see in the media. Because you hear all these things about bombs and everything coming to Liverpool, but you don't know whether it's real or it's not. Yeah, most of the time when when I hear stuff on the news, I, get, I do get a bit scared, yeah. I think about it, but it don't really bother me. We also spoke to Faye Curry, our school MP for Year 8. She's been conducting some research about the feeling of young people about the issue. Faye, can you tell us what is your research? Well, we found out that 100% said that they do not think that the media has a balanced presentation on terrorism. So your role as MP, does many students Holly Lodge get affected? Well, 63% said that they do get affected, but the other 37 said, said they do OK, thanks. So we can see, young people often don't know where to go to get accurate information from. So our concerns about global issues such as terrorism can depend on where we're finding our information from. The internet and social media play a big part in this. Hi, I'm Millie. This is Isabel and Molly. Our main story today is about social media and young people. We will be looking at how social media can affect the education and mental health of children. We decided to start by calling upon the experience of head teacher of Holly Lodge Girls College, Miss Teasley. Um, I think it can, yes. I, I think it can affect it positively, but I also think it can affect it negatively if it's misused. And I think it's like quite a few things. Um, technology, you know, technological speaking. If it's actually used properly, it can be a real boost to people. It can support them. It can have a friendship network. It can actually point them in the direction of, of you know, new information. But if it's misused, if it's used for bullying, etc., it can have devastating effects on young people. Yes. Is there any way to like, stop it? Well, I think it's about education, isn't it, and about trying to explain to people, you know, um, families trying to explain, um, you know, things on television, in school, assemblies and, and things like that, trying to explain the effects that it can have on people, because I think sometimes the people who do it, who try to, to bully people, perhaps don't really understand the devastating effects they can have, and if they knew they probably wouldn't do it. The vast majority would not do it, but it's because they don't understand. So I think it's about education, it's about saying to people, this does ruin lives, it does upset people, and you need to stop. We also interviewed the school mentor, Lisa, whose role within Holy Lodge, amongst others, is to support the students, particularly with regards to mental health and wellbeing. We asked her how social media can affect the mental health and or education of children. She told us young people may feel pressure to look a certain way due to images of celebrities. Not only can this affect young people's mental health, but it can also affect their physical appearance as they may alter it to look like the celebrity. Another danger is that on some websites you do not know who you're talking to, which brings the risk of young people being exploited or groomed. Obviously this can affect a young person's mental health because it may lead to a situation they feel they cannot get out of. Social media can also affect a young person's mental health because it's constantly on. For adults, they mainly just use their phone, but for young children, they're persistently on apps like Instagram, Facebook and other social media, which they may find really difficult to switch off. Um, what types of social media do you have? I have Snapchat, Instagram and Twitter. Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook. Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook and that's it. How much time do you think that you spend on these? In a day, probably like an hour to two hours. A lot, like half a day. When I get home from school, I like do go on it quite a bit. It's hard to get off. You see. So would you say that you find it quite like addictive, maybe? Yeah. yeah. 
Do you think it affects your mood or your education in any way? Not my education, but my mood, yes, sometimes. In what way? When you see stuff on it, like people like, put depressing posts on, it makes you feel in a kind of bad mood, but if people put funny posts on, you feel in a good mood, yeah. yeah. It depends, like, what I go on, really, because I see, like, stuff that people post, it, like, makes me upset sometimes. Um, I get distracted from work. Yeah. So. Do you think that it affects you in a positive way as well? Um, yeah, sometimes, because it can help me with my education or how I'm feeling about myself. But, yeah. To try and gain a professional insight, we interviewed mental health specialist Phil Long. Hi, thanks for coming to talk to us today. Yeah. We'll just launch straight into the questions. Okay. Um, do you think social media can affect children's mental health? Yes, I do. Um, it can be in a good way, but it can also be in a challenging way for young people as well. So social media, we know, is um, it's very much part of young people's lives. And what we have to do is we have to consider how it affects young people. So um, there is some evidence to suggest that it can have a negative effect on young people's mental health and well-being. But there is also evidence to suggest that it can be useful as well. So the most important thing, I think, is that we need to be aware of when young people are accessing social media, how it influences and affects their mental health and well-being. What are the possible effects on a, child, on a child's mental health? Well, everybody's different, so it's hard to answer that sort of generally, but what we can say is there is some evidence and some research out there. It's developing research because it's quite a new field, but we do know that there's some particular groups of young people who may have particular difficulties who then struggle with some of the contents of social media, for instance. So I would give you an example of perhaps some young people who use self-harm as a coping strategy, or some young people who have got difficulties with their self-esteem, um, some people who may have difficulties with eating, and sometimes, not all, but some young people might access uh, material through social media which isn't necessarily helpful, and that may have a negative impact on their health and well-being. Um, that said, there's also some useful um, resources and social media can play, as I said before, um, a positive aspect in that young person's life. So if they are having difficulties, they may actually find some benefits to social media. Mm -hmm. Can this have an impact on their daily life, for example, isolating themselves or withdrawing from friends? So I think, um, yeah, we do know that some people do isolate themselves. Perhaps they spend time up in the bedroom and not socialising with friends or spending time with family. So for me the important thing would be um, to try to balance it with the time that they have in, in the real world if you like and, and you know sort of interacting and socialising with who they feel most comfortable with and not spending too much time alone on social media. Is there any way to prevent children being affected by social media? I think doing something like what we're doing today is a really good way of um, helping us manage um, the potential challenges that may have a negative impact on young people in terms of social media and how they access it and the content that they access and what have you. Um, so for me, most importantly, is about raising awareness um, <clears throat> about, again, what we mentioned before, the benefits but also the challenges. So I think uh, education is a really important thing and also keeping ahead of, um, of things because as we know, technology advances very, very quickly. Uh, social media itself is also evolving very quickly. There's different platforms um, and different sort of um, ways of accessing social media. So for me, I think most importantly, we need to be aware of, um, of, of all the challenges, as, as we mentioned before, but also um, I think what's most important for me as well is to have conversations. So that might be with somebody like a parent, a teacher, or someone you trust, so to share as well some of the um, some of the activity that you have on social media, because you may not actually realise that uh, there are some potential dangers. But also, if there's good stuff to share, uh, I think that's useful as well. This is clearly a very controversial subject, with strong arg arguments both for and against the impact of social media on young people's mental health. It can have both advantages and disadvantages, as mentioned by the people we interviewed. 
It seems we need to be aware of the potential dangers of social media use and educate young people about the potential dangers on our mental health. It is, however, a part of everyday life for young people and can often be really useful. Thank you for watching the BBC School News reporter, Holly Lodge.